it's a lot of hard work. I know it it all sounds super fun and it is super fun, but you kind of have to fall in love with the process. You can't just love the glamorous parts. Hi, I'm Walker Scobell, and this is how I became Percy Jackson and Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I first started reading Percy Jackson uh, when I was in third grade. I read it seven times since then, the first five books. I was obsessed with it because I was born in Virginia Beach Hospital. There's a giant Poseidon statue like near the beach and I used to print out a picture and I, I bring it to school to show people and, and tell them like this is proof that I'm Percy Jackson. I was filming The Atom Project and I got an audition for Percy Jackson. My sister, she played Nancy Boba Fett. Um, and my little brother played the teacher, Mrs. Dodds. And to get into character, he put like my mom's high heels on and he talked in a really high pitched voice. And so you can like see me kind of cracking up in my audition, it took like maybe like 30 or 40 takes. And I have no idea how I got it, but I don't think it really like set in until I got there, until I was filming it, until like I was on camera and people were calling me Percy. I did watch the Percy Jackson movies. When I was a kid, I loved them. I still do. I definitely think that my Percy Jackson is closer to the books than the movies were. I think a big part of that is Percy's age. He's 12 years old. I think it's very easy to forget, but I think it was very interesting to kind of explore the fact that they're still children. Mr. Jackson, you will learn to control yourself. Do you understand me? Me? Do you understand me? He can't help it, Mrs. Dodds. Percy's special. Meeting Rick, I met him in my final kind of audition when they told me I got the part. I didn't know he was gonna show up. I wore my Camp Half-Blood t-shirt that I got in third grade. I was freaking out. And so the second time I met him, I was a lot more calm and collected so I could actually talk to him. He's given me a lot of tips and tricks for playing Percy. The biggest thing was just to relax. He told me that he loved how we were playing the characters and that we were doing great so far, which kind of like set me in. And it, this was at the beginning, so it kind of made me relax a bit more and, and made me kind of lock in. We did a full month of just training and uh, rehearsing scenes. I did a lot of underwater training and like sword fight training with the stunts team. We practiced wires a lot. I did this scene where I'm falling, it's like an um, overhead shot of me falling down. The chimera sequence when I fall off the arch in St. Louis. So uh, I was on wires and I was falling down. So we practiced that a couple times. We did a bunch of wire work and, and sword fighting stuff. Normal day on set. I wake up at like 7.30. Me and my dad or mom, we drive over to set and I get there around 8.30. I would get into my wardrobe, my clothes, and uh, my sides would be in my trailer. So I'd go over my sides, see what I'm doing that day. And then I'd go into, I think, hair first. I'll get my hair done. If it, if it was a day where I was gonna be wet all day, they would put this like slime in my hair to make it appear wet for the whole day, which felt really weird, um, especially when they like wash it out. And normally they just make me probably like, three times more tan because I reflect light on the volume stage. <laughs> and um, sometimes like there's a scene where I'm, I'm like deathly pale and I have like these like red kind of, it's red all over my eyes and I look like I'm about to die. And <laughs> what I find so funny about watching that scene is that that day they decided not to put any makeup on me other than the redness. So like the deathly pale you see, that's just my normal like complexion. And then I go out to film, we go rehearse um, maybe like nine o'clock, 9.30. And then I go to school for like 30 minutes until they set up the shot. And um, we just go up back and forth, um, shooting school, shooting school. Uh, and then at the end of the day, I head to my trailer, like wash all my makeup off, take my clothes off, put new clothes on. I don't just take them off. Yeah, and then I head home and go to bed or play video games. The first day on set, we were shooting at the Met on the volume stage. I keep saying I film all these weird places, but the whole time it's on the volume stage. Just the scene where it was me and Ariane are talking. We do this bit where 
We both have sandwiches, and I would take his meat off his sandwich, and he would take my cheese, and that took like a week of training. That was the first scene. I was definitely a bit nervous. Going back and watching it, it's super hard to watch that scene specifically. I think like as the show goes on, like each episode, it kind of gets easier to watch because it's like closer to now. But that first scene, it's like impossible for me and Arian to watch because that was our first day like ever filming together. I think the hardest stunt sequence was the Minotaur fight. Not only because it was just like, I was fighting like a bull that doesn't exist. I think one of the most difficult parts was that it was like pouring rain and it was dark. So I couldn't really see what was going on. And a lot of like my notes for camera were to open my eyes more, which is really hard when it's like, when there's rain coming in your eyes. There was a couple different ways we shot the Minotaur sequence. One was there's this like really, really tall, like seven foot guy. And he was in the full skin tight gray mocap suit holding a Minotaur head. So it was a lot less intimidating than you think it would be. So there was that when I was fighting him with like the sword. And then when I crawl onto his back, they, they shot that in a very interesting way. So they made a mock-up of the Minotaur, like without arms and from like the waist up. So I was on a wire and I'd sprint and they had like a little bit of fur so I could grab onto it. I'd sprint around him and then I'd jump, grab onto the back and then I'd get on his head. And they did a full like, sequence of me ripping the horn off and stabbing him in the head. That took like maybe three days to shoot. It was a long sequence. I was wearing a wool sweater while we were filming the Minotaur sequence, kind of like this. And, uh, but it was like real, like sheep wool. And so when it would rain, there was a very, very terrible stench coming from my sweater. And it kept getting like loose because I was running around and it was pouring rain, it got heavy. And um, they would like constantly change that out and then dry it. And we had two sweaters, I think, they just rotate them. And so that took a while. Sometimes we had to pause the scene so we could let the sweater dry out. And also like Camp Affleck fight. I think that scene might have been like the hardest technically to film because we're like running in sand. There's three of them. There's Dior and then two of her cabin siblings. And so for every one move they did, I had to do three. And so I was running backwards on like this rocky sand uh, doing this amazing sword fight. While we were filming that, I did not expect Dior to scream that loud. No! And if you look at my face, I'm not acting. I was genuinely terrified she was going to hit me. I love Dior, she's the sweetest person ever, but she's terrifying, which I think is perfect for Clarice. People listen closer when you talk. They work harder to be your friend. I've never had like an actual friend group that I've been super connected to until I found acting and I started Percy Jackson. And now I have like Leah and Charlie and Dior and Arian, of course. Um, all these people that I feel like know how I'm feeling. One of my favorite parts about Percy is that, um, and, and something that I hope fans take away from it, is that there's a place for everyone. There's always somebody that knows what you're going through. With Percy specifically, like how many things happen to him and how stressful his life is, he's never lost like confidence or, or hope. He's never lost his sense of humor, which I think is a really important lesson in real life. 